The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Chit Chatting. I am your host today, Jocelyn Davis, and this is my co-host, Karen Testerman. And today's guest is the Honorable Steve Negron. Don't giggle. I won't. I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> Just always laughing. We love it. And we're welcoming him, welcoming him to Chit Chatting. And we're going to be talking about all sorts of different things, the political field here in Nashua, nationally. And specifically, I heard you talk on Saturday about the Ukraine treaty, which is something I've been talking about for a number of weeks, right. but everybody pretends hasn't happened. So we're just going to kind of go all over the place. Sure. And I just want to say thank you well, thank for you joining much, Karen and I. Absolutely, Karen. Yeah, thanks. And good to see you guys. So great to be here oh, with you. It's great to be here. Inside. Inside, Inside. Yeah. not in the cold. <laughs> yeah. So you're running for U.S. Congress. I am, yes. In the, second, the whole state of the New Hampshire. The second congressional district. We ran last time. We were the nominee last time. Yes. We're very fortunate to win the nomination, and we're back at it again. And we believe we have a heck of a shot this time uh, to be able to unseat Ann Custer. Yes, that is the main goal, right. unseat Ann Custer. Right. So what's a little bit different this time than the first time through? Well, certainly one, we now know a lot more than we did last time. Mm -hmm. and we have more name recognition this time. Not that we vote counted, but 113,990 people voted for us last time. And that's our starting point. Um, we're stronger this time than we were last. Um, people really resonated with the message. And, and in a bad year for Republicans, as we saw, we lost the House and the Senate and the Executive Council. The only thing we were able to maintain was the corner office. In a bad year, we still took 42% of the vote um, with really no help. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't have any help from big Republican um, RNC or the NRCC, and our state was struggling at the time. You know, our, our party um, had a chairwoman that left in June. Uh, for personal reasons. And so we were really in a state of disarray. And now with the president on the top of the ticket and the fact that we had 115,000-ish registered Republicans that did not come out to vote last time, half of those come out to vote this time. We win the House back. We win the Senate. We win the Executive Council. And I think we bring Ann Custer home. And we send you to Washington that to represent the <laughs> we, the people. Absolutely. Fully. Somebody Absolutely. that actually represents we, the people. Uh, you know, and some that listens. You know, as right. I said on the trail, I said, you know, this is not my seat. Um, it's your seat. And so, you know, we are actually um, the people that send us to Washington. Those are our bosses, um, not the people in Washington. And so people often ask me, well, what happens if they, you know, you have to do something that's against what the party would want? I said, well, the party didn't vote me in. Um, right. The people of New Hampshire voted mm -hmm. me in. And, and that's who my, my, my bosses are. And so that's who will always be responsible to. You know, I find it very frustrating uh, because... All of a sudden, we don't hear from Ann Custer for two whole years. And then, and then all of a sudden, about right now, I'm starting to get literature from her. Sure. Mm -hmm. Paid for by our tax dollars. Yes, ma'am. Because yep. it comes out as a congressional information to you, but it's only to raise her name recognition. Correct. And, it's, right. and that's in my her opinion. MO. Yep. Right. And, but in my opinion, that's political. Um, Literature, it is. and it should be charged to them. To her campaign. Absolutely. Right? At least instead of the franking that's being done right. at the House. Absolutely. Yep. Right. And I, I think those are important things that people don't understand. Um, many people say, well, you know, that's just fluff. Well, it's not fluff. It, when, when you take all those little fluffies, you get, you know, you get the dust bunnies. Absolutely. You get You get that little acornejo. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx! <Yeah. laughs> it's a private joke. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> the one, the yeah. one word I remembered from kindergarten in California, just, just <laughs> in, in full transparency. <laughs> we didn't set that up. <laughs> I didn't plan that. I know. That, it just that, that was just weird. Thank you, Lord. Um, a little bit of levity. But people, what I'm finding is in the Ukraine treaty, in the, the literature coming out with, with politicians, legislators that have already won, that there is this, um, I'll call it, um, Ooh, what the hell? They have an extra edge over sure. you, but it's off the taxpayer dollar. And my thing is, stop 
stop, stop using the taxpayer dollars, stop wasting it. If you're having to raise your own money right. it, by whatever means, then I think anybody else running should have to do the same thing. There should be no extra, you know, little Well, they right. certainly the do background. raise their own money. They've been building their, uh, their war chests all along. They mm -hmm. continue right. to add to it and their lobbying money, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But the the thing is that they're not expending that money from that pile right. to pay for their uh, campaign literature. They're expending our tax dollars right. to supposedly inform us. Right. So we know that the it's, challenge you know, is is very daunting. Right. Right. But, but it's a uh, you know we're I'm never one that's going to shy away from a fight. And so you know it's more than money. And it was clearly evident when I was outspent three to one in the primary, yeah. and still won the primary, and outspent eight to one. And she only beat me by eight percentage points, actually yeah. seven point two, but we won't, we're not we're not seven point eight. <laughs> yeah, but it's under point five, so it's closer to seven. Right, that's what it is. So you, you know, we believe that there's that there's a, a pony here somewhere. And so, you know, we're back at it and we believe that we have a message that resonated last time. And and unfortunately, um, our congresswoman has done some things like voted for the impeachment, the articles of impeachment. Yeah. Um, she just came out for a young woman who was at the Golden Globes about, you know, a woman's choice and the oh, tweet yeah. that she oh, put yes. out. Um, so those are the kind of things, you know, we, as you both know me, we'll always be respectful mm -hmm. about that. But this time we know that we're going to have some information and, and we're going to frame it that she's going to have to be responsible and answer to the people in New Hampshire. Yes. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yes. That's the multiple things there. But the other thing is, is that you're, you've returned yes, in the past three or four runs, right. the uh, candidate who has been our, our nominee has um, run one time and then for whatever reasons right. have chosen not to come back the second time. So right. you're sort of like the comeback kid. Well, it's, it's funny. You and I actually had this discussion <laughs> about, you know, the race last time could have been the first half of, of a full game. And now mm -hmm. this is the second half. And, and even when I went after the district and after we, we didn't, we were unsuccessful, a lot of people in the second congressional asked us, please run again. Cause you know, in 14, the person who won the nomination, uh, Marilyn Garcia, did not come back in 16. Jimmy Lawrence won it in 16, did not come back in 18. And we won it in 18. And, you know, we owe it to the people of the 2nd Congressional, yes. right? They invest in us, mm -hmm. you know, with time and effort um, mm -hmm. and money uh, to do that. And for us to keep on walking away, I think, is a little bit disingenuous. And so we had a big family discussion. And we're right back at it. So that I Good. think there's a lot of people around the second congressional that are that are happy that we're running again. And 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 you build up the face recognition, the name recognition Absolutely. when oh, you yes. come back that second Absolutely. time instead of constantly starting over, over, over again. Absolutely. Right. And everybody knows everybody basically knows what you're about, what you stand for. So now it's sort of the cherry, the cherry on the top, the right. whipped cream and and uh, expanding everything that you want to share with right. everybody. You know, Roger Wilkins, my campaign manager, he says, you know, twenty eighteen and 2020 are two completely different races. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Completely Absolutely. different. And I'm very stubborn. I'm like, no, they're the same. He goes, they're not. No. 2018, people didn't know you. Correct. 2020, people know you. Now, it's a, it's a different messaging now. Right. You know, so right. we've established our bona fides as, as a, a conservative. And so now we know that with the president on top of the ticket, the people are going to come out. Now it's about persuasion. Now it's about why me versus Ann Custer. Mm -hmm. And there's a big block, 40% of, of, of independents and undecideds, and we're going to have to go out to them, not abandoning who we are, mm -hmm. but realizing that there's some topics out there that are, I call them party agnostic, um, that we're going to focus on to make sure that we know that we're going to be representing everybody. Winners and losers, right? You don't win and represent a state and only represent half the state. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And, and that's something that we're seeing in Washington. And right. that's in every state. It is. And not just here, but because we're in New Hampshire, we'll, we'll stay with New Hampshire. But I can't get hold of Gene Shaheen. I can't right. get hold of Mikey Hassan. I can't get, they don't want anything to do with us because, right. you know, you're, you're right, you're Republican, you're conservative. This is our agenda, and the rest of you don't count till it's time to run again. Right. And it's right. very obvious. It's very disconcerting, and it certainly makes you feel um, like, does my vote really count? Right. Yeah. When when it only matters when you're ticking the box. But where were you during the rest of the time? Where were you while we're fighting the opioid crisis? Right. Where are you when we're trying to fund the schools? Where are you for all these things? Whereas you right. are standing here saying to us, I'm going to represent everybody. I want to hear what, what everybody has to sure, say. I'll absolutely. still stay with my party platform right. and my core beliefs. Absolutely. However, 
well, gosh, that I hadn't thought of it that right. way. Let me let me incorporate. But there isn't that on the. There are where constituents we are. that have everyday problems that I believe mm -hmm. that those people that serve in Washington are responsible to be able to try to help them and not automatically say no because I have a D or an R and you know behind my name. Well, and I think that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. What well, if if you really analyze it, every elected office is a bipartisan office. Sure. Because at the end of the day. You know, you are running, as Lynn said, on your principles or on your party platform. Right. Though that's what tells people where you're going to be or where your your moral compass is. Right. But then at the end of the day, you're still representing everybody that's there, right. no matter what party that right. they are, right. because they are the citizens of New Hampshire and so forth. I'm curious about this Ukraine yes. treaty sure. that Lynn keeps talking about. I haven't had the chance to really listen to her in depth on it, sure. but you now have the actual document do. in front of you. and read it. And you've read it. I have. And when was it really um, ratified? Well, it was actually, it's, it's, a, it's a treaty that needs to be ratified, ratified by Congress. It was actually signed by Vice President Al Gore, Oh, it hasn't been ratified. Uh, oh, it has been. It was oh, signed thought, by it was signed so. by him okay. absolutely, and it was under under the uh, the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things that that I find disconcerting is that we hear the same piece of information, and two groups have this diametrically opposed difference of opinion. And so, I go to the source, right. and so we're always talking about this treaty. And so, I took it upon myself to go to the State Department and find the treaty. And the State Department website was very useful. And so. Just to set up, the, the, you know, the title of the treaty is the Treaty on Mutual Legal Assistance in Criminal Matters. So we have an agreement between the United States and the Ukraine to help each other when it comes to criminal matters. All right. Um, so when we look at what was being what was happening with um, Burisma, mm -hmm. um, those activities, I hate to say it and people will disagree with me, were criminal activities. Yes. There was a prosecutor in the Ukraine that was going after one of the members of the board because of some illegal activities. And it's about being paid. It's about how the money's being flowed. There are activities. And the reason why treaties are in place is that when I have a relationship with a country and I get to offer up money, I want to make sure that the money I'm giving you is actually going for the purpose that Congress has authorized. Right now, right. people need to understand that the president is the sole person responsible for setting uh, foreign affairs, foreign matters. That's, that's it. He's the one. Now, Congress appropriates and approves money, right? They don't decide when it gets to go. And you've heard a lot of stuff that said, you waited too long. Mm -hmm. That's not Congress's role. Congress appropriates and approves and authorizes the release, the, the, the money to be used. How and when that's done, it's totally up to the President of the United States and the State Department. So when you hear a lot of the saber rattling, they said, you took too long, you withheld it. It's not Congress's purview. It's the President of the United States' purview. So I went and I started reading this, and I actually went and highlighted everywhere it said criminal in the document, and there were over 19 instances where they talk about criminal activity. And I just want to just talk to you about the very first one, then they said, why are we even doing this with the Ukraine? And the very first article, Article 1, says that the states shall provide mutual assistance, that's between the United States and the Ukraine, in accordance with the provision of this treaty, in connection with the investigation prosecution, and prevention of offenses and proceedings related to criminal matters. So when somebody says, hey, he had no right to do that, I am telling you in the treaties between us and Ukraine, it's the very first paragraph. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to understand where the Ukraine came from, right? It was part of the Soviet Union. Right. And actually, Russia tried to invade right. the Ukraine, Correct. right? So you've got a state there that's had, there's a lot of bad actors that are in there. And so this treaty and President uh, Clinton knew exactly very well that this was required. So the president was doing nothing more than complying with what President Clinton and his administration had set forward. So this isn't something that, that President Trump decided to do on his own. Mm -hmm. this is, and quite frankly, my question would be, why weren't some of these things looked at in the previous administrations? To include the Bushes. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This has been well, it's been since uh, 1998. Yep. It was signed in Kiev. Yep. And then um, it was ratified and it goes back and forth and they changed absolutely. the information. And it was entered into force on February 27th, 2001. And it was ratified with no dissent. That's right. So, so every it's been here since 2001. 18 legitimately. Years. That's right. right. That's, That's right. a long time. And, you know, same as you, I went through and looked at all the different um 
bits and pieces, but it's ratifying, uh, it contains provisions assuring both countries, meaning the USA right. and the Ukraine, have mutual cooperation against crime. Right. Yeah, I, that's I mean, it. that's what it's right. supposed to be. You can't so spin that. <laughs> well, they tried. Oh, well, they did. Right. I mean, you can, you but know. I mean... And, and you remember they were going against why was Attorney General Barr even involved? Remember, because Attorney right. General Barr? Well, I'll tell you in Article 2 that for the United States of America, the central authority shall be the Attorney General. Oh, boom. Of boom. the United States. So, <laughs> all right, if anybody just would have taken the time to read the, the, the article mm -hmm. right. and what it states, you may have a different perspective, right? You may not like the president because you don't like him. Right. But, and I agree with every Democrat that said that nobody's above the law. I, I, I believe that with every well, fiber of my being. Right. But there has to be evidence of, of somebody breaking the law. Mm -hmm. And right. none of this. Substance. Nothing at all. And when you read through, and then the other, the third one that I wanted to bring to our attention was the whole idea of quid pro quo. That you can't do that. Let me read you this. <laughs> It says, if the central authority, which was the attorney general on our side, of the requested state determines that execution of the request, which was the money that they needed for, for military right. aid, would interfere with an ongoing criminal investigation. Barisma? Do you think? <laughs> okay. Prosecution or proceeding in that state, it may postpone execution, meaning it may not give the money or make ex execution subject to conditions determined to be necessary. Oh, subject to conditions. Conditions to be necessary. Oh, so conditions. Is that a bribe? No, no, it's a quid pro quo. Oh, oh, quid pro quo. Oh, but that, but that's wrong. But I'm telling you, if you read the treaty, it says it's in black. It's and in black white. and white. So, I, I, I understand. You know, they. It's when I was in a service and I had a colonel and and I he asked me for an answer and I gave him an answer. He didn't like the answer. He'd say, "Bring me another rock." And I bring them another rock. And no, that's not the rock. And that's what the Democrats have done. They're trying to find something, and they have been, going all the way back to the FBI mm -hmm. and the fake dossier. Right. That they're trying to find something, and they thought they had it now. An aha moment, right? Yeah. That the president was doing something illegal. And so I just try to do what I would do in every other aspect if I was in Congress or what mm -hmm. I do with my business or even in, when I was in, in school is get to the root. Mm -hmm. Right. Find Find Ground the primary truth. source. And, and then and, and then talk about the primary source. If you want to argue about the treaty, let's argue well, about yeah, the treaty. Right. right? The, exactly. Interesting phrases that I found, um, including with this cooperation, taking testimony yeah. or statements of a person's, of persons, providing documents, records, or other items of evidence. Right. Of which, yeah. you know, I need the evidence that shows that the taxpayer money was being laundered in right. these energy companies, that taxpayer money was actually even being spent right. in energy companies when it was supposed to be taking right. care of them. And it's mind boggling. Lo uh, they ask, you can locate and identify persons and items, serve documents, ex uh, execute searches and seizures. We can ask right. them to do that. This is all criminal, exactly right. what you would see right. here. Enabling and executing search and seizures, assist in forfeiture of assets, restitution, and collecting fines. Right. And remember the two articles of impeachment, the very first one was abuse of power. And they rested the, the, the charge of abuse of power that he was withholding, which we just said is within the treaty, Right. right. Dealing on criminal matters, which it says we're supposed to be doing. Right? right. So the very premise of their first article of impeachment is, I think, is is faulty at, at, at best and right. should be just completely discarded. Mm -hmm. The second one about obstruction of Congress, you know, look, really? everybody has is a right to due process. And this wasn't a, a criminal proceeding. But you can't force me to go and take on and be a witness to something if I don't believe that I'm gonna get a right hearing or, or, mm -hmm. or a right, right. Um, trial, even though it wasn't a trial. So I just don't understand. But, they were, but here's the thing, they yes. were, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. But they're pretending it's a trial. Right. Oh, so yes. we are all sitting here, in, well, this side says it's political, this side says it's criminal, and they're shoving it down the middle that, right. that it was an actual court case, right. and it's not. It was, it's a political It's a hearing, court. and it's that's all that it was. That's right. And so it's, right. it's, the, it's the use of words. It is, right. and it's right. funny, and coming from, and you both know Terry, and coming from family of attorneys, I asked a very basic question. If this was a criminal case, right. Based on what we've been able to see, I'm sure there's stuff that we have not been privy right. to, mm -hmm. but based on everything you see, would it even get to a point of anybody preferring charges? No, absolutely not. 
No. I, I absolutely not. Would never see the inside of a courtroom in any way, shape, or form. And I have one brother-in-law who's a deputy district attorney, right, in Delaware County, Philadelphia, that he does criminal proceedings. And he goes, this is insane. This is almost like a kangaroo court. Yes. Is what it is. They know what the result is mm -hmm. that they and want. That's what they want. And this is what they're going to do to try to get to that point. So, yes. and then of course we have our speaker that's holding on to the articles and not sending oh them over Lord. to the Senate, you know, which is but another. Th that's she, another debacle. Right, and so uh, now the president has had this other opportunity to demonstrate his leadership and he goes after a criminal. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in another country right. who was already been responsible for the deaths of multiple Americans. Right. And then they turn around and they say, uh, oh no, he, sh he, he was acting outside of his responsibility. <laughs> and he should never, he needed to come to Congress. He needed to tell us everything that he was going to do beforehand. Now, I ask you, <laughs> what war do you ever win by going out and announcing to the whole public and everybody who's listening, this is what we're considering. Uh, this man is doing this, this, and such and so, and he might be over here in X, Y, Z. We are now going to um, focus on him. And if this happens, then we will take action. And you, we're looking for your approval, Congress. Right. You know, it's really funny. And that was something that was brought to me. And so I did some more research. And if you go back to the previous administration, over 600 airstrikes, both in, in, uh, in uh, Iran and Iraq, um, were done by the previous administration without congressional approval. So it's not like this is something that, that has this to is happen. This nothing new. And the fact of the matter is a couple of things. Number one is, would you tell Adam Schiff anything? No. <laughs> after what you just saw, being even though he's the chair of the, Senate, of the House Intelligence Committee, you need to be very careful because a lot of times you have you know, you have operational security and you want to make sure that you're not going to divulge something that's going to put other people in danger. Right. Number two, this general was acting as a, um, in a in official capacity as a combatant. Mm -hmm. um, he was acting in his capacity as a general. Um, he wasn't anybody that was in a political figure. So therefore, there was no assassination. Assassinations are only those of political figures. And so he was there. We had an opportunity. We had American soldiers' blood on his hands. He was probably part. And I saw a picture today. I remember as a freshman in college in November of 1979, and I remember the picture of our hostages in mm -hmm. Tehran. Yes. The guy holding one of the hostages with his eyes blindfolded was, was Suleimani. Suleimani. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so look, we have long memories. Yes. Right? And, and what we did this time is that, let's remember in Benghazi, they asked for help, they got none. And we had a dead ambassador and I think four or six Americans. We had an embassy, which is, by the way, an embassy is U.S. soil. Yes. Correct. Right? And people don't understand that the president has what's known as a national security strategy. And the very first pillar, there's four pillars. The very first one is protect Americans here and abroad. And abroad. And, abroad. and that's Correct. what they mean. And that's exactly the embassies what it, in the other countries. It is. And yes. it, it is U.S. It's, it's like if they would have attacked right. Lowell or Nashua. Yes. And so this president, unlike others, when assistance was required, immediately 100 Marines were dispatched to improve. And then the 82nd Airborne was then mobilized. And they're going to. That's what a president's supposed to do. That's what a commander in chief is supposed to do. Right. Sometimes, as Roosevelt said, walk lightly, but you carry a big stick. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you that what we did here was sending a message to 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 everybody around the world, mm -hmm. not just Iran. No, and everybody. that's his number one job. He, when you open up the Constitution in the United States and you look at the first job of the president, it is to be the commander in chief. Right. Absolutely. To protect the people. Th and that's exactly what he did. And that's what yeah. he did. Yeah. So there was a vote this afternoon, and I was out driving around. So uh -huh. that was to limit the powers of the President of the United States. And they took the vote, and what happened? I, it, 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 well, it, it, it passed. passed. It, it all passed you need is a simple House. majority, sure. But, but And what does that mean? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. It's just a resolution. It can't yeah. be acted upon. It's not... It's not constitutional. It has nothing to do with the Constitution. You know what I find funny, strange funny, is that we listen to uh, the Speaker of the House and the rest of the people following her, and they continually say, the Constitution, our founding fathers. And then you come to the other side, the, the Republicans and the independents and the constitutionalists, and they'll say, the Second Amendment, paragraph one, just like you did. Right. Always very specific about where in the Constitution, sure. what amendment, 
what this, what that, instead of this blanket, the Constitution. Yeah, we all know it's this emotional argument. They want, you know, mm -hmm. they want to they scare us. You know, all of a sudden now this was going to be World War III, right? Well, really? The thing I find is interesting, and Wait a I, keep, yeah. I keep it in, in the back of my mind constantly, is to remember that one president that we had was, a, quote, a, a constitutional attorney. And one of the things that attorneys do when they're in the courtroom, especially in a criminal case, is that they will lay the groundwork so that you think this is where they're going, that this is the thought that they have. Right. So if you go back and you look at speeches, it always starts with the Constitution and the people and so forth, and then the zingers come in afterwards. Right. So you think that they're thinking constitutionally. That's why they continually say, say that. the Constitution. You have to listen for but you, the, in, those the in weasel between. words. Yeah. yeah. The weasel words are in there all over. Mm -hmm. And they're not quoting the Constitution. They're all over outside of it. Right. It's going to come to roost. Yes. It's going to come to roost in 2020 this year in November when we take back the House because a lot of people are just tired mm -hmm. of, of this whole saber rattling on their side and really not doing any work for the people right. at all. None. And, you know, and just they work for us. They're we supposed pay their to salary. be passing um, a, a, a um, budget every two years by the Constitution to enable the uh, the military. Sure. And they're not doing that either. Right. I mean, for heaven's sakes, we keep moving the date that that budget is due. Yes. Right. It went from so January you know what I mean? to Feb yeah. March to <laughs> So I had like this brilliant thought. So I had to file, um, I had to do an extension on my taxes. Right. Okay. And I didn't know that they can charge you Oh, penalties yeah. back to that. I, I, I didn't know that because right. I thought, okay, I was I, I, I don't have the time. I don't have what I want. The things haven't come in. I'm going to file an extension. I think we should do that to the Congress, okay. to we the legislators <laughs> and say that if you don't pass it on the date specified, there's going to be penalties because the guys. IRS is yeah. pen penalizing me and right. the rest of us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my Good goodness. Idea. This half hour has <laughs> flown by. <laughs> it has. <laughs> And I want to thank Steve Negron for joining me this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Karen Testerman, my co-host, who you will see very often when I'm not here. We're going to be going back and forth. Thank you so much for joining me on Chit Chatting with Jocelyn Davis. Have a great afternoon and a great night. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.